Hey community group leaders and teachers, I hope you're doing well and having a fabulous day. Hey, I'm excited to introduce this week's Leadership Minute. This is one more tool that we can have in our tool belt to lead more effectively. Um, over the last couple of months, we've been looking at, at some different ways that we can help grow our groups with, with either some, some challenging points that I believe that our church is going to need to overcome this next year as we learn how to lead better and lead those around us through who knows what sort of uncertainties 2022 will unbring to last month. We talked about prayer and its connection to growing our groups. This month, I want to look specifically at, at this, this idea of discipleship and what Jesus talked about small groups and, and how Jesus envisioned small groups and how we can navigate through, through the, the seasons of change and the seasons of growth and create some healthy growth for our groups in the middle of all of that. So uh, the reality is, is that everything changes. There are changes that are happening all around us, but, but in some ways we can help to guide and steer those changes, I believe, as we hold on to these biblical principles. The first one that I want to look at comes from Matthew 28 and Matthew 419. In Matthew 28, Jesus gave us the Great Commission. He said, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing everyone in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And Jesus said in Matthew 419, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Both those passages talk about this idea of discipleship. What does it mean to really be a disciple? And so Matthew 28, Jesus explicitly tells not only the 12 that were gathered, but there were probably 300 or 400 people that were gathered there around Jesus before he ascended into heaven. And he said, go, make disciples of all nations. God gave me authority, now I'm giving it to you. So go, go make those disciples. And I'll walk with you every step of the way, by the way. I'm not gonna leave you alone. That's, that's a beautiful blessing, but it's also a challenge that, that God called every single believer to make disciples of others. And that, that Greek verb there, to go, that command to go, it's actually a word that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, you have to do this as a separate activity from everything else. But specifically, everywhere you go, as you go, be very intentional in calling people from darkness into light, calling people to follow the way of Jesus. And as you do so, then Jesus will be the one that develops them. And, and that's why I went back to Matthew 4, 19, because Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Jesus didn't say, follow me, follow the step-by-step -step program, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then all of a sudden, boom, you're gonna be some, some fisher of men. Jesus said, follow me and I will transform you. I will make you into fishers of men. I will help you fish for people. That is, we follow Jesus and we invite others to follow Jesus. He's the one that does the transformation. All we have to do is simply meet together Commit to each other that we're going to walk hard after God and let God do the cleansing and the internal work. And the early church practiced this very thing in Acts chapter 2. If you look at Acts 2, 42 through 47, you see after 3,000 people responded to faith in Jesus and said yes to him in Acts 2, 41, these early believers met together daily in homes, in small groups. They prayed together, they read their Bible together, they, they studied the, the apostles' teaching, the gospel message together. They prayed for each other. They, they invested in each other's lives. They celebrated communion, even in some ways to remember that, that commitment to, to the gospel message. And then they went out and shared that gospel with more people. And, and it says in 247, the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So there was something about that meeting together that, that not only helped grow up and encourage believers, but also helped infuse such life and passion in them that they couldn't help but go out and bring others in. And what happened when they brought, brought others in? They didn't just spawn new groups. They, they joined the existing groups and they got to see what growth looked like in, in that context. And so my challenge to you, as you study the gospel message and look at how it can impact you and challenge you, and as your group looks at that gospel message specifically as we walk through this this tell someone series, look for ways to invite new people in. And don't just have them come in and hang out, but invite them to the conversation as you learn what it means to follow Jesus and invite others to follow him and, and to share the gospel and how the gospel can impact you and everyone around you. That's my challenge for this week. If you have any questions about that Leadership Minute or um, anything else that we've discussed over the last couple of months, Feel free to reach out to me, give me a call, send me an email. Hey, but I, I'm excited to see what God is going to do in this next season as, as he really gives us wisdom for how to shape and direct that, that growth, that change that naturally will happen anyway, to steer it towards his ultimate good purposes. 
Um, so with that, I look forward to seeing you back here again next week for another Leadership Minute. Hey, blessings, friends.